Well, the reason I had to take this generator apart is that um, this generator is equipped with a GFCI outlet. And uh, the way that I'm having it, uh, the way that I hook it up to the house and everything, I hook it, I back feed it through the panel, and doing so was causing this GFCI to drip. And the reason that was, was because the neutral of the alternator is bonded to the chassis of the generator, but also the neutral of the house is bonded to the uh, ground of the house as well. So that created a ground loop. And in order to uh, get rid of that situation, uh, this generator, as most generators do that have GFCI outlets, have a uh, bonding wire right here. And so this is basically, I just stuck it on here just to show you where it goes, but you basically remove that, and now you've got a floating ground, um, which is just what you would need to hook up to a house. But part of the problem is, is when I took this thing apart, the terminal here, and also the terminal here was so loose, there was about an inch of uh, space between there. And uh, that would have caused a lot of high resistance and uh, consequently a lot of heat. And that's not very good because this whole assembly likely would have caught on fire, which is right near the gas tank and which is right near the house. So that wouldn't be very good. So I went ahead and tightened all that stuff up and um, We'll see how she works. This is actually a, a pretty nice generator. It's uh, got an idle speed control circuit, which is um, functions by this little CT down here, this little current transformer. And as the current through the conductors increases, so does a magnetic field, and then the voltage from the transformer goes into the control mod module, the idle control module, and that subsequently raises the engine speed to compensate for the load. So, let me get this thing put back together and we'll do a demonstration for it and also a little bit of a load test.